Hello and welcome to this I'll Vote 21 online meeting for the Isle of Wight County Council seat of Carisbrook and Gunville. A brief word for the benefit of the public. I'll Vote 21 has been formed with the sole purpose of enhancing democracy by providing an unbiased platform for candidates. With no affiliations or funding and no candidates were aware of what questions will be asked today, although a list of topics was distributed in advance to enable candidates to prepare. All 138 candidates in this year's election have been invited either directly or via group and party leaders. The following candidates were invited to this meeting. Bev Hastings, Conservative. Joe Lever, who I will just share um, apologies from. Just wanted to give my sincerest apologies, but I'll be unable to attend the hustings for Carisbrook and Gunville candidates this evening. I'm disappointed not to make it, but I hope the event goes well and I'm keen to take part in any future events that may be held. And pleased to say that this evening we are um, joined by Verity Bird, who's the Labour candidate for Carisbrook and Gunville. Um, so candidates, or in this case, sorry, Verity, you're going to be asked questions from our pool of questions, plus others that have been submitted by the public regarding island-wide issues and others regarding your specific locality. Um, I've already informed you that there is a two minute limitation on your answers. Mm -hmm. And so as we approach that cutoff, I'll raise my hand and just request that you promptly finish afterwards. Uh, but before we start the questions, Verity, I'm going to hand over to you. Uh, you've got two minutes to give a personal statement. Thank you. Um, hello, voters of Carisbrook and Gunville and anybody else who happens to be watching this. Um, it's my privilege to be standing in my home ward of Carisbrook and Gunville as the Labour candidate for the Isle of Wight County Council. Um, I moved to the island in 2002, so I've been here a while now, um, and we moved to Carisbrook in 2003, um, and that all followed a career move from Yorkshire down to Southampton University, which was a, a big shift with um, three young children. I joined the Labour Party because I felt the, the cruelty of the government's ideologically imposed austerity effect on the poorest and most vulnerable, including people with disabilities, was simply not acceptable. There has to be a better way and no country or organisation has ever cut its way to prosperity. I'm an architect in my career. I started my career in private practice and after 12 and a half years at Bradford Met, um, that was when I first started becoming more aware of sustainability and sustainable issues. Um, we were doing things in Bradford um, back at the beginning of the 90s, which was still cutting edge. Um, over a decade later, which is kind of sobering, really. Um, I had a stint as a lecturer in architecture and interior design at Southampton Solent University, specialising in sustainability, construction technology and communication. And it was my privilege to be able to really expand my knowledge and understanding of sustainable development through that time. Um, and to develop links with the Eco Island group who were um, active at the time and Bentley Botanic Gardens. Uh, with whom I organised the final year projects um, on a sustainability unit looking for in innovative technologies um, and as part of that the outputs were posters that were used by John Curtis who runs the Vent of Botanic Gardens um, for a real it was a real life project which was great. Um, now partly self-employed, partly retired um, which gives me the time to do potentially a proper job of a councillor supporting you, my electors, if I'm fortunate enough to be selected, privileged enough to be selected. Um, and also I'm a governor of Barton Primary School with a special responsibility for special educational needs and disabilities. Um, I love walking the dog in our lovely countryside. Um, I run White Yuka's Ukulele Group and the Isle of Wight Ukulele Festival. And um, hopefully I'll get a chance to talk about this uh, a bit later, but I, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, I started the Clatterford Exchange Facebook group, which was around our home. I felt so helpless in the face of the pandemic. I just had to do something. So I started the group. I've given out, gave out phone numbers and um, so that if anybody needed help, if they had got no food and couldn't get a, and were isolating or shielding and they couldn't get a delivery, we'd have sorted it. And it was the only thing I could think of to do. Um, we can hear a bit more about that later. Thank you, Verity, because you've, you've yes. been over the time now. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. It's good to have a little bit of an introduction to you. 
Um, so now we're going to move into the questions. Uh, just to clarify, when I put my hand up, that's that's two minutes it's approached. Um, so the first question um, asks you to suggest a new policy that the council could pursue on the island. Uh, anything. Just, yeah, just that's literally it. Suggest a new policy that the council could pursue on the island. Um, oh, there's a place there. Um, <laughs> I'm feeling quite pathetic now because I, I haven't actually sort of, I've been giving so much thought to the, the topics that we were given that I haven't really, um, Think about one of your key areas that you've you know that you've decided to focus oh, of on. course yes um i would love to see the islands as a beacon of sustainability um we have um because we're separated from the mainland by water we've got unique ecosystems um we also we are self-sufficient in renewable energy for um some of the time during the year and that surplus energy is simply thrown away so um what would be absolutely amazing would be to embed sustainability in every decision the council does to um set up the infrastructure to store surplus uh renewable energy to use our wonderful countryside to create greater and better cycling routes um and and pedestrian routes all around the place and use those routes to also create wildlife corridors linking up all the different pockets of um, the, the, the different wildlife habitats so that, I don't know, squirrels from Bryston Forest can get chummy with squirrels from Parkhurst and all of that sort of thing. I think we could be an absolute beacon and I think that would be fabulous for tourism, ecotourism and all sorts of things. Brilliant. Okay, thank you for that. I'm, I'm pleased that um, you know, obviously, that's a, a passion of yours that you've been able to. to think well, I'm about. glad that came across. <laughs> I'm glad I could think of something. <laughs> um, okay, so the next question here asks: How can residents become more confident and engaged with the council's decision-making processes? How can residents become more confident and engaged with the council's decision-making processes? I think this is a really, really important question. Um, the, at the moment, the, the sort of cabinet structure of council and the fact that it's it's basically it's run by one party. We're a, kind of like a one party state. And a lot of the decision making is done behind closed doors and in secret. And I, I really don't think that's a good thing. I would like to see a much broader approach to talking to people, to involving people in the decisions that um, affect them. So when I was sort of thinking about, well, how am I going to start to run an election campaign? Um, I didn't want to use the Clatterford Exchange Facebook group as a political platform because that's not what it's there for. It's not what I set it up for. So I've set up um, a Carisbrook and Gunville community forum Facebook group, which anybody in the area can join or anybody with a real interest in the area. So if, you're, if your mum lives in the area and you'd like to be involved in the decisions that affect her, get in touch, join us, that would be great. Um, if I was elected, um, which would be amazing, um, I would really like to be setting up um, sort of little mini forums to meet, well, once we can, obviously, to meet with electors um, on a regular basis to talk about the things that affect them. So for instance, um, where I live, there are kind of three key things on Clatterford Road. There's the fact that the road hasn't been properly done up. Parking is nightmarish and um, speeding is also nightmarish. I think I have a solution that would resolve certainly well some of the parking and um the speeding um and i'd like to work on getting the, the road finished was that a wave yeah sorry sorry that was a reading of the camera um but i don't know whether my ideas are what the wider community would want so i'd like to be setting up the forum that would talk to people to actually um, make the decisions to be involved actively in the decisions that affect them so whether that's 
my area around Clatterford, whether that's down the road in Gunville. Um, yeah, let's talk to each other. Let's make decisions communally. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so the next question here says, what, would the, what could the council do to inspire residents to take more pride in the island? What could the council do to inspire residents to take more pride in the island? I think everything I've just said would help. Um, I think there needs to be a sense that that the council has pride in the island. Um, so, oh, and and that's kind of not something I particularly get. I feel there's there's pride in in some areas, but there are other areas we'd really rather forget about. And I have a feeling that that actually sort of knocks on into the whole Carries Brook and Gunville thing because. Carries Brook is perceived as nice and Gunville is perceived as not quite so nice. And I, I hope folks of Gunville that you don't think I'm doing you down because I'm absolutely not. Um, it's about making everywhere the best it can possibly be and giving everyone the opportunities the best they can possibly have. Is that okay? Yeah, no, no, thank you, thank you. That's the, the answer to the question, yeah. Um, so the next question I'm going to ask you is one of the ones that's been sent in from the public. Um, and this says, what can be done to improve educational aspiration for residents of all ages? I'll repeat that, what can be done to improve educational aspiration for residents of all ages? Um, I think in the Isle of Wight College, we have an absolutely fabulous resource, which it's quite likely is underutilized, but I don't have enough information at present to um, necessarily quite make that judgment. Um, the, the real problems in school age education derive from um, issues around um, poverty and educational underachievement. Um, and the Labour Party policy of um, reducing, eradicating as far as humanly possible child poverty, I think could go a long way to helping with that side of things. Um, if you take an area like Pan, a lot of the children have special educational needs and um, most of those are around um, behavioural issues, anger management, um, that uh, and speech and language problems. And those are all issues that derive from poverty. Um, addressing that would also help to address the issues in the previous question of making people proud of where they are. Um, because I think the island has a huge amount to be proud of. Um, from a point of view of, um, adult learners, lifelong learning. Um, putting in the infrastructure in place, making it easy to expand one's knowledge, um, to do other and new things in older age, not just academic learning, but, but learning it in all its broader aspects. So um, the ukulele groups that I run, um, I've started a lot of people off learning the ukulele and it's great for the little grey cells, it's great for your mental health and well-being and um, we have a lot of fun doing it. Okay, thank you. So that's, that's a broad range of um, services that you'd, you'd recommend there. You have to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, thank you. Um, right, the next question is about the volunteer sector. The volunteer sector carries a great deal of weight on the island, especially during the COVID crisis, to the great relief of taxpayer funded services. Can you suggest ways in which the council can support this sector? So I'll just repeat that again for you. The volunteer sector carries a great deal of weight on the island, especially during the COVID crisis, to the great relief of taxpayer funded services. Could you suggest ways in which the council can support this sector? I think that 
comes back to my answer to the previous question, actually, the um, uh, or the broader answer to the previous question, eliminating, eliminating or reducing poverty. Um, I think cuts to services are a, a major cause of a lot of the problems that the voluntary sector then has to step in to address. Um, very often it's it's having the space to do things so possibly the council using surplus space for um voluntary sector startups um for um and, and support um possibly uh, administrative support and um oh, now what, what would the word be um the um you know, just the just the sort of general sort of backup that it can be really hard to do if you're doing your damnedest at the front end. Um, maybe I don't know match funding some of the um, fundraising. But um, if you if if you take Newport at the moment, we've got the old um, accessorising monsoon shop has been turned into a new centre for independent arts, and that's going to be um, an arts hub with um, exhibition space meeting space. I'm hoping to move White Yukas into there um, potentially um, to do some of our sessions. Um, and it's a way that we can perhaps um, engage with the voluntary sector in ways that are positive for the voluntary sector, but which will also um, start to revitalize, help to revitalize our town centers because our, our town centers are in such a dire and miserable state um, but I, I think it's the sort of big picture stuff of, of alleviating poverty is really where, where the key to, to things is. Thank you Verity. Um, now I do have to assure um, anyone who's watching that you, you didn't have the questions in advance but they, no. have seemed to have, they have seemed to have fed into each other and it's funny because this next question that I'm going to ask you you'll see why I say that. Um, what will you do to address all the empty shops in each town? <laughs> The main streets are dying. What should the council do to specifically address this issue? Um, well, one of the, the key problems, I think, in our town centres is parking. And but this is going to sound like a complete distraction, but um, one of the main things that, that as a Labour Party we'd like to do is introduce an hour's free parking in our town centres, well, in all of our car parks, um, and stop car parking charges at six in the evening um, so that people can afford to just go and park and go into town and do some shopping. I would like to see that, um, that's something that if the Labour Party were in control of the council, we could do from pretty much day one. Um, well, I, I guess there would be some infrastructure to put in place and some settings to change on things, but you know, easy to do stuff, easy wins. Um, I would like to see um, a, a study done of exactly what the actual occupancy in our car parks is and um, how much space is occupied at, for most of the time. Because if you walk through Scarrett's Lane through any of the Newport car parks, they are usually, I don't know, two thirds, three quarters empty. Well, what on earth is the point of having empty space? You'd be better off charging much less having full car parks and full town centres. So that's one thing that I think we could do very quickly to make a difference, to actually make our town centres accessible to people rather than being limited to two hours in Morrison's or Sainsbury's and um, feeling obliged to do your shopping while you're there because it's only fair. Um, but I think the sort of whole revitalising and uh, our, our town centres is, is really important. It would be great in Newport, which is my local town centre, where I'm most likely to go, to have some real consideration given to the, the traffic routes, because traffic in the town centre is frightful. Dri driving through the town centre is frightful. Getting past the town centre is frightful. Um, so it would be great to see some sort of looking at, at routes in each direction and then considering the potentially pedestrianising the centre. But also filling up, you know, if we can get the people in, then the businesses will come. So it's all comes together as a bundle. Thank you. 
Okay, we've also had many questions pertaining to cross solent travel links, ferries, reliability and costs. How would you address existing concerns? And do you have a vision for improved connectivity? So I'll, I'll just, do you want me to repeat that? Or? No, I'm fine, thanks. Um, <laughs> well, pre-COVID, having lived on the island and worked in Southampton, I was 100% in favour of mixed link. I will kid you not. Um, my preference would have been a bridge because bridges are beautiful and tunnels are horrible to go through. Um, and you could have built in foot and cycle traffic on the bridge as well. But um, the, most of the sort of campaigning I know has been, been for um, a tunnel. But I do feel that, that our stretch of water has given us some protection on the island from the issues that, for instance, faced Bournemouth last year, where COVID was still bubbling away in the background and those beaches were horrendous. Um, the ferry companies, though, they are unquestionably a barrier to cross Solent travel, not the um, island solution. Um, they're some of the most expensive per mile crossings in the world. They're some of the only crossings to um, offshore islands that carry no subsidies. So I would very much like to see some fighting for some subsidies to get us um, a, you know, a much better rates. And the, the cost, uh, particularly of vehicle travel, and particularly at high periods like the summer, is, is just prohibitive for many, many um, islanders. And that is um, a great shame. Our schools struggle to recruit got good teachers. Um, our, our poor schooling deters people from moving here because the quality of education is, a good is an important decider for people who have or expect to have families or hope to have families. Our hospitals struggle to get um, people to move here to work in the RNHS. Um, and going across to the mainland to get treat medical treatment is a nightmare. Um, I have a, a friend who was due a knee op. They said they could fit her in just um, the week before Christmas, but they would be discharging her on Christmas Eve and they couldn't guarantee that she would be able to get a boat home. She would have been in agony in a wheelchair stuck you know it was been a joseph and um, mary thing no room at the inn so i would personally and um, support an open and transparent feasibility study with a very wide remit to look at to make recommendations on cross solent travel because i think it's a bigger issue than one person can solve and i think that's something that the council should be heavily involved in in doing it should not um make anything there should be nothing cast in stone thank you for that okay so knowing your local community as you do what local issue would you like to address that you know is of concern to residents um well i think we've a problem with local lack of local representation which um, this is a blatant piece of electioneering, obviously, but I am the only candidate who's standing who lives in the ward. Um, John Hobart, who's been our representative for a long time, uh, lives, I believe, in Gurnard. He stood down. Our new uh, Conservative candidate, Bev Hastings, lives in Bryston. Um, Joe Lever lives down the road in Newport West in, in the estate. And I think we've been let down by not having proper representation. Um, the condition of roads and footways is locally is, is pretty dreadful. Um, I'd like to work with Island Roads to make some progress on Chatterford Road, which they half did about two years ago. Um, but it's, we need to review and prioritise other roads in, in the area. So the, where the middle road comes into the village, that's absolutely dreadful. There's a massive pothole. Um, the, the footways are dangerous. Uh, we've got footways lacking. Um, the footways are uneven all over the place um, and there's been a lack of improvement overall in the Carisbrook and Gunville area. We have real problems with speeding and dangerous driving. Um, so there's the hazardous roundabout by the Waverley Inn and I'm amazed we don't get more accidents there because so many drivers really don't seem to understand how um, roundabouts are actually supposed to work. Um, the High Street, Middle Road, Clatterford Road, um, Gunville Road all suffer from speeding issues. And there's where I would like to look for imaginative solutions in discussion with local residents. So 
not flying in to say this is what you're getting, but um, you know, good, sensible, sound solutions, which I think can be found. Um, if you actually look at, at France, most of the villages in France have absolutely stunning um, islands in the middle of the road, beautifully planted, beautifully landscaped, generally low maintenance, but what they do is slow down traffic coming in. Um, driveway permissions and parking um, are another issue locally. And uh, we even had an issue of fly tipping last night. So you can't say I'm not up to date. Okay, thank you. Um, and interestingly, again, uh, we, it's not a question as such, we've had a kind of a comment. So I was gonna read the comment to you and ask for your thoughts on it, but this again ties into what you have just said actually. So it says, um, a bench outside Gunville stores and a pedestrian crossing across Gunville Road to Taylor Road. Extend pavement along East Gunville Road outside Home Bargains Crossing. Now, does that mean um, something to you as the as one of the it, candidates it in the area? It absolutely does. And everything in that um, proposal makes complete sense to me. Whether the road would be wide enough to put a footway all the way along, I don't know. Um, and that's something one would need to discuss with Island Roads. We have the same situation along Clatterford Road between um, the old archaeology centre and, um, well, and the beginning of the road where it comes around the corner at the dangerous bend that everybody has to cross on because there isn't a footway this side. Um, we've got exactly the same issue on Clatterford Road where we've only got a footway one side and all the parking's on the other side. So everybody parked the other side has to cross the road to get to their house. It's mad. So that's exactly the kind of thing that I would love to be meeting with people and sorting out sensibly. And if things can't be done, I will let you know why they can't be done and what the reason is. And we'll start to think about what we could do instead because there's never only one solution to a problem. And that's an, that's an architect thing. If you give two architects the same problem, they will give you two different answers. Guaranteed, 100%. But I'm always up for suggestions and constructive okay. criticism. <laughs> Thank you, Verity. Um, that's, I mean, that's all the questions that we actually had prepared for, for the session. Um, so I, I'd now like to invite you to give a short closing statement or to reflect on the, the process. Um, well, I'd like to thank I'll Vote 21 for organising this. I'm really sorry that the other two candidates aren't here because I would have really liked to have heard what they have to say. And I think you, our electors, deserve to have heard what they would have had to say and hopefully um, Joe, at least, who has apologised for not coming, will we'll get a chance to talk to you at some point. Um, I would like to say a little bit about Dave Bunday, our um, police, the Labour Police and Crime Commissioner candidate. Um, I had the, the really good opportunity to meet him in town today and um, he seems to me to be an absolutely good egg candidate, if, if that means, and well, it's probably just a sort of silly, even if lightened way of putting it, but um, if, if you're not wanting um, a Conservative or ex-UKIP, um, and they are virtually one and the same um, police and crime commissioner, it would be really good if you could give your vote to Dave Bunday or to the Liberal Democrat who's standing. And then do use your second vote because the um, lowest two in the first ballot, if the, the first two, if there isn't an outright winner the first, in the first round, the votes from the, the, the second votes of the two people who, or the people who weren't top are added into the votes of the people who got through the first round. So do use your second vote, I would say. Um, Dave Bunday's values are absolutely sound, centred in, and I have some notes, I hope you'll be reading them, um, in the labour values of social justice, protecting the vulnerable and that kind of thing. Um, his, main, um, his main sort of planks and priorities are, are funding and resources. Uh, Hampshire and the Isle of Wight gets the worst funding in the, camp, in the, in the country um, for police funding, um, we get 10% less than comparable organisations. And that's, um, that's really not good enough. 
Um, so that's one thing that he wants to resolve. Um, of the 17 Tory MPs in our area, um, only one of them has raised the issue of funding with government. And um, now that he is in a position to do something about it, he hasn't. Um, he, he, he's really concerned about drugs issues and sorting out what works. Um, so looking at examples from elsewhere, um, it's something he's been involved in and passionate about for a long time. Um, he feels that the country's failing women and girls and really wants to see something done about um, rape and sexual abuse. And we know that there's a problem in schools around that. Um, and um, proper protection for retail workers as well. So I, I hope you'll forgive me for giving a bit of a plug today, fun day. But if you, if you don't feel you can vote Labour, do um, vote Liberal and give Labour your second choice because our values are so much more shared than the others. Um, yes, and well, I hope you've had a good sense of what I, who I am and what I stand for through this process. And again, thank you very much, Natalie, for, for chairing and, um, and keeping me under control. <laughs> well, thank you for, for, joining, um, for joining me this evening. Um, also, obviously, Verity Bird, candidate for Labour for Garrisbrook and Carisbrook and Gunville. Um, can I ask you just to repeat the um, the name of the Facebook group that you referred to? That you oh said yeah, it, it was um, Carisbrook and Carisbrook and Gunville Community Forum, which is okay. a bit of a mouthful. It's best to say it with your teeth in. <laughs> thank you. Um, and I know, obviously, you were expecting to, to. You didn't expect to be on your own this evening. So again, thank you for your for your time, and and thank you to those of you who've watched. And don't forget to vote. Absolutely. <laughs>